All right, so today we're going to be covering the basic farm ranch property owners. Basically, the guy who owns a little bit of forest or a little bit of land with trees on them. A basic fallers kit and a tree felling kit, firewood kit for that particular person. So here it all is. So we're going to cover everything in this video. We're going to cover chainsaws. We're going to cover sharpening, chainsaw maintenance tools that you want to have at hand, stuff like that. So we're going to start off with the chainsaws that I have, and then we'll talk about what I would recommend for a good uh, combination of chainsaws or chainsaw in general. Okay, so before we talk about what chainsaws I would recommend you buy, let's first start off with the chainsaws that I own. So this is the smallest out of all my sauces. This is a 042, uh, no, 024, sorry about that. 024 steel chainsaw this is the smallest or i think it's the second smallest saw in a professional range of chainsaws this has a 14 inch bar on it but i believe you could probably run up to a 16 inch on this thing it has great power a great all-around saw if you're going to mostly be cutting down um first and second degree thinning uh sliced of trees pretty much now that saw is great but if you want a good general purpose saw then you want to look at something in the 50 or 49 cc range that's going to include your 271 and 261 now this is the 271 but the 261 is really going to be the go-to saw most people who most people are gonna buy the 261 it's the most popular chainsaw steel is producing currently at least i believe it is i'm not entirely sure but it's a great all-around chainsaw you can get you can take care of smaller or mid-sized trees no problem with this saw and you can even take care of with a little bit of extra work some big trees as well you can get by with this saw on big trees as well now this is going to come with a 14 inch bar stock but i have a 20 inch bar put on it um so but this is not going to come if you buy the saw you won't get this you need to buy this separate but still the steel 271 or 261 is going to be probably everybody's go-to saw now if you're really going to get into some big trees or you're going to do more stuff with your saw such as chainsaw milling <clears throat> then you want to start looking at a saw in this size in the 60 to 70 cc range this particular one is the 400 c this is a 66 cc chainsaw now your big saws the 400 C's, 462's and 500's, those are the big professional chainsaws that Finnish loggers are currently using for their bigger alternative for saws. This is what they grab whenever they go out cutting some big old trees. Now of course there are bigger saws than these, there's of course the 661 and uh, the 881 but those at least in European and Scandinavian countries are mostly used for chainsaw milling and not really used for felling. Of course, you see people use those saws for felling, but mostly if they're gonna use a big saw for felling, it's gonna be either this, the uh, 400C, 462 or 500. I think the 500 might be the most popular. Now, the advantage of having a big saw or a small saw is of course, you're gonna get a lot more power in this thing. Uh, you can sling big old bars on these, I believe. You can sling up to 32 inch bars on all these saws, um, which a 32 inch bar will be more than enough for any tree that you'll come across here in Finland. Um, at least you, uh, with that bar, you'll be able to at least circle the tree and uh, cut it down that way. Now, I believe still doesn't recommend you run a uh, 32 inch bar on the 400C. Um, but I'm sure if I put a 32 inch bar on this, at least I've seen it on videos, it runs that bar no problem. Uh, now, of course, I'm not going to recommend that if you do that, if you have this saw and you're going to put a 32 inch bar on it, you do that at your own risk. Um, not my fault if you break your saw, but I'm sure I could probably do it. So the question is, what saw should you buy? Now, my personal opinion is if money is no issue to you, get a three saw combination get a small sort of arborist saw like a Husqvarna uh, I believe it's a T540 XP um, and that's gonna be nice for like trail work or I'm <clears throat> just having a saw at hand at all times if you need to do some small little thin uh, a small little you need to cut a branch or something like that or do some mil uh, limbing or whatever it's gonna be nice for all kinds of small work then 
you want to have a mid-range saw such as the 260 one which is going to be good for general use you're going to be able to cut some bigger stuff with that some smaller stuff and uh, it's going to be a good all-around general purpose saw and then a big saw for the big old jobs which you're going to have if you can only afford one saw then i would recommend you look at the type of trees you have mostly on your property and you buy a size of saw accordingly. Pricing, of course, that's gonna be important here as well. Pricing for all these saws are gonna vary. And of course, the bigger the saw is and the professional and non-professional saws, those are also gonna be different. So to get the power head with a 14 inch chain um, and bar, for this saw goes this saw is gonna run you I believe it's about five to six hundred euro with a 14 inch bar chain and of course the power head now if you want a 261 now I don't have a 261 here but this is gonna play as a stand in uh, this 271 right here um, if you want a 261 which is gonna be a great general purpose saw that most loggers for are using as their main saw anyway uh, with a 14 inch bar totally stock you're gonna be looking at around I believe it's around seven to 800 euro for that thing. Now, if you want this, the 271, AKA the farm boss that I already mentioned earlier in the video about, uh, this is gonna run you about 400 to 500 euro. Now, if you really want the big saw, and you really wanna get into those big trees, this saw right here, the 400C, with an 18 inch bar and uh, the normal, uh, the normal just half wrap. Now this is a full wrap handle, what this saw has. Now the great thing about a full wrap handle is you can get into uh, uneven cutting positions with this thing and you can really turn and manhandle and rotate your saw as needed. Um, so without that, then we've got a 14 inch, not a 14, a six, uh, fuck. <laughs> An 18 inch bar on this normal log dogs. There's also different log dogs and stuff like that. Normal log dogs, 18 inch bar normal handle you're gonna be looking at about I believe it's about 900 to 1200 euro for this big and with all these upgrades if you're interested this saw with all this stuff cost me about I believe it's 14 to 1300 euro so on most saws you're gonna have two chain well in all saws basically if they're not electric you're gonna have two chambers and most of the time the fuel is gonna be at the back and bar oil at the front now what the saw runs is um, chainsaw bar oil and two stroke mix now of course everybody wants to ask can you run just normal motor oil uh, in a chainsaw now of course you can it's better than nothing I've personally done it before but the great thing about this bar oil is look how stringy and sticky that is I don't know if you can tell now that's by design because that's the design so it would uh, basically attach itself to the bar and it would have just fling off as just normal uh, regular motor oil it would do if you put it on here so but now you can't just put any type of fuel in this like you can do the bar oil again i'm gonna say this i'm gonna preface this one more time i would not recommend to run anything else than bar oil in this but i'm sure you could if you really wanted to or if you were in a pinch but the actual fuel you can't mess up on because if you put just normal fuel in this like normal like 98 95 you're gonna fuck up your chainsaw you want to run two stroke mix now the type of two stroke mix that you want to run is going to be non-ethanol because the ethanol at least if your saw is going to be sitting for a while the ethanol fuel is over time when your saw is just sitting it's going to gunk up the carburetor and uh, when you go the next season to start it up again it won't work and you need to go in and rebuild that carburetor and all that stuff so that's the big problem with um, running ethanol fuel. So you want to run non-ethanol or uh, less ethanol two-stroke fuel in your power saw. Now I won't be giving you a full like chainsaw maintenance class today. I already did that in an older video last winter. So if you want to see that, I'll link that in the video description. But I didn't show you really chainsaw sharpening in this video. So I'm going to quickly do that today. So first of all, you want to make sure that you have the correct file for your saw. Now this particular chain is a 3 8 chain. So it will, it'll usually say it on the packaging, like right here it says 3 8 If you can see that, yeah, there you go, 3 8 and this is a 3 8 chain. And uh, all the information that you'll need for files, 
new chains, whatever, it's gonna be right on your bar. So check what that says and buy a file or if you need a new chain, then buy a new chain accordingly. To the actual sharpening. So how you do this is you take your file, you lay it on, first of all, you wanna mark where you started so you don't file your saw twice or you, you know when to stop filing pretty much. You lay your file on there, make sure that it's in the correct angle with the chain or with the tooth. There's a little laser mark right there, so you want to make sure it's aligned up perfectly with that. You don't want your you don't want your file like this. You don't want your file like this. You want it correctly with the point of the tooth, and then straight on there. And then you want to grab your chain and then give a long pull on it. And usually you'll do three strokes. And uh, if you, but you can choose yourself how many strokes you want to do. Um, but three strokes seems to be the best. And then you want to do that for each chain because you don't want your chain to be sharpened unevenly because of uh, that can ruin your cuts. You won't get as straight of cuts. And then of course your chain is gonna not last as long because you're gonna have teeth that's gonna start, uh, <clears throat> that's gonna be unusable uh, when some teeth are still completely usable. So make sure that you sharpen your chain always evenly. Now when that's all done, now we can talk about all the different tools and things that you wanna have with you when you're gonna go out logging. Now we already covered this before in a video, but I wanna do it again and kinda of talk a little bit more about it and talk about my philosophy, why I think this is the most important tools, why this and why that, because I'm always trying to minimize this as much as possible. <clears throat> what type of personal protective equipment you wanna have in a forest? I'm gonna start off with the most important to the least important. Most important whenever you touch a chainsaw or you're about to turn it on, you wanna wear a pair of chainsaw pants or chainsaw chaps at the very least. And these are chainsaw chaps, these are my steel class ones. I love these to death. I love these so much. If you have cut for any length of time, you'll get close calls at the very least with your bar touching your leg. And um, yeah, the biggest, uh, with chainsaws, the biggest killer is at the leg, so that's why you want to cut, you want to protect your femoral arteries, you want to protect your legs. So I don't care if you don't, if you choose to not wear a helmet, that's a bad idea. But fine, if you choose not to wear gloves, bad idea. But again, if you want to do that, fine. But at the very least, if you're gonna, if you're only gonna wear one piece of safety equipment, at the very least, wear a pair of safety approved pants or chaps, or chainsaw pants or chaps. Then you wanna have a helmet. That's gonna be second most important. Now a helmet is gonna be important for whenever you're cutting down a tree, you wanna be real careful. But what, what has happened, what I've seen before with other people and what I've heard stories about is, if you have something loose on the top or on the crown of that tree and you push your saw in, the vibration of, the, of your saw is gonna shake that thing loose and it can come at you. You don't want, want that coming at you without a helmet on. I actually heard a story uh, from a fellow YouTuber. He told a story where he was on a wild damn fire and um, he was cutting down a bit. Uh, he wasn't cutting it down. I believe it was one of his friends was cutting down this tree, which was on fire. And the guy had bought this brand new Kevlar helm and it was all brand new and stuff like that. He, he dug his saw into that tree and the vibration of the saw shaked something loose from the top of that tree, came right at his helmet, smacked his helmet and penetrated that Kevlar helmet about an inch. So there you go, you see, you see how that's dangerous, I guess. So a helmet is really, really important when you're felling. Not so much if you're bucking or just cutting firewood, but at the very, it's really important when you're felling. Then, Maybe not that important for safety, but it's just nice to have a pair of good leather gloves whenever you're dealing with branches, especially branch like fir branches or pine branches, because they have the needles and they're really annoying to move around with, with your bare hands. So have a nice pair of gloves as well. And it also kind of dampens the vibration of your saw. This is my chainsaw maintenance kit. We'll get into this at the end of the video. An extra bar is always nice to carry around. You never know when your bar is gonna get stuck. Um, and you need to retrieve your bar out of it. And if you don't have a secondary saw, at the very least, you should have a secondary bar. Now, this is my 18 inch bar, which I originally got with this saw, but I have the 20 inch there, so I have the 18 inch as a secondary or as a spare. You want an odolmar with your oil and fuel that's gonna fit into your kit. Now, I'm gonna show you a non nonsense way how to set up a folder's belt. 
you don't need a bunch of gimmicks. The basic premise for at least first and secondary thinning is gonna be this. Chainsaw tool on you at all times. You never know when your chain's gonna jump off your bar and yada, 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 your chain can get stuck. There can be something which gets stuck inside of your uh, dust cover on your saw. So having a chainsaw tool at hand so you don't need to run back to the car to get a chain to change a bar or, or a take off your bar, it's gonna be nice. Then some sort of IFAC or a tourniquet at the very least. I would recommend a full on IFAC, but if you can't fit that or if you for whatever reason don't wanna carry it, a tourniquet at the very least should be on you at all times. And then some type of tool. Now you can choose what type of tool you want. You can have an ax or you can have one of those log grabbers. Personally, I don't really like the log grabbers. I don't find them that useful. It's, they seem like they only work when they want to work the small handles makes them difficult to, to use and whatever. I don't like them. What I like is this. I like to have a small ax and a wedge. And the wedge is of course gonna be if you need to wedge over a tree. But the ax is basically gonna give, give me a couple tools in one. I think it's gonna give me, it's gonna give me like three tools in one. Now this is not gonna be a good, um, log grabber really but basically if i'm cutting down smaller trees normally i'm only gonna make firewood out of those if i'm making firewood i usually make really small rounds in this but smaller rounds you hit this at the end of that log and you can move them around with this so i kind of get a um uh, i sort of get a semi log grabber from this but the main job with this is gonna be to first of all pound wedges and secondly, knock off branches, which I failed to knock off with my saw. So instead of having to turn my saw back on to get rid of a small nub, and I can just quickly grab my axe from my back, and just quickly knock that off. So that's why I like to carry an axe. Now this is of course for if you're only doing smaller trees, but if you're gonna get into bigger trees, you of course wanna add stuff to this, like a wedge pouch, for instance. I have two types of wedge pouches. I have this big one, which I had on me in that vlogging video, which we did. I have a big one, which I can fit a total of three big wedges in here. And then I believe it's in here. Then I have this smaller one, which I can fit a total of three small wedges or two big ones in. So that's nice. So now as a final thing, if I can get this from here, I'm gonna show you what I carry in my basic toolkit. First of all, I'm gonna have a spare scrunch tool. Never know when you're gonna need it. Even though I have a, a scrunch tool on my person at all times. You never know when you can lose that, so having a spare one is always good. Wedges, I actually carry all my wedges in here. I have, usually I carry like a total of two or three, but I believe I have a, like overall I have a total of nine wedges. So I'll quickly grab them from here. So I have these ones, then I have these two right here. And then I have the one on my X scabbard right here. But yeah, I have a total of nine wedges, I believe, because boy, you can get in trouble. And the worst thing that can happen is you are cutting down a tree and a big fur or whatever sits back on your saw and you're scrambling around to find something that resembles a wedge because you didn't pack enough wedges with you. A tool to adjust your carburetor, that depends on if you are able to adjust the carburetor on your saw or if your saw has a manual carburetor in general, the newer saws like my 400C doesn't. And then as far as the files go again, a round file and a flat file is always essential to have. I don't have handles on these. I do have a handle in here somewhere. Then I have my loggers tape as well in here. If I need it, it's in here. I don't usually carry this, but if I need it, it's in here so I can quickly grab it. And this is my steel 25 meter one, this is the one that I use. I do have like a proper like Spencer as well but I like my steel one a little bit better. It's a bit longer, so I have a better reach with that. A stump wise, this is gonna be nice. This is actually, I've never used this, but this is basically meant for if you wanna sharpen your chain in the field, you can hit this onto a stump, and then you can put your bar through here, and then you can sharpen your saw on a proper wise. So yeah, I've never used this before, but I'm gonna def definitely get to use it the next time I need to sharpen my chain. And then finally, I'm gonna have two extra chains. So I'm gonna have an extra 3 8 chain, and it's a 20 inch. And then I'm gonna have just a normal, I believe this is a uh, 0.325, 14 inch chain, which I run on my secondary saw, which I usually have with me. So I'm gonna have two extra chains with me at all times, uh, pre-sharpened, whatever.
anyway that's gonna wrap it up for the main chainsaw kit and uh how to set up a basic failures kit for the farm and ranch owner now of course there's a lot of different uh ways to do this but this is how i've done it and i've been doing it like this for about four years now and i like this system but you kind of have to tailor this according to your needs because of what works for me it won't necessarily work for you so you'll kind of have to like look at this get some ideas and tailor it according to your needs so yeah but i hope you got some sort of information out of this hope this was at least entertaining for you to watch uh if nothing else i've been bluish today hope you all enjoyed leave a like if you did and i'll see you all in the next one goodbye